We're going to make some nice cedar shutters today, Muskoka style. Just got some 1x6 raw cedar, so let's get to work on making them. Made a quick dimensional drawing here just showing you what the shutters are going to look like. Three boards, five and three quarters uh, in width, roughly one inch thick. Um, standard depth here is five inches and five inches. These boards will be five inches. Cut on a diagonal. The only reason I need this drawing is just to get these angles here to uh, help mass produce these. So what I've done, I've pre-cut everything, I've squared it, uh, I've made it to width, I've made it to length, and now what we're going to do is add a 45 to give it just a little bit of depth and make it look nice as my sample piece. So I have that set up in the router here. Just a 90 degree half inch shank chamfer bit and you can adjust the fence however uh, deep you want that 45 to be. So we'll just start mass producing uh, all the edges on this now. So this is the Z pattern here, I've just got a temporary set up to see what it would look like. Uh, you can see the chamfer here that I've added, it kind of gives it a nice feature when the, when the two butt joints are joined together. Now something I've thought about is when this is up on the house, there's likely this is likely going to curl at some point. Um, fortunately it's on the, these shutters are going on the north side so there won't be too much exposure to sun to dry this edge out or the side out, but what I'm thinking of doing is adding these biscuits uh, between this batten and, and the diagonal, and that's gonna prevent, hopefully prevent it from twisting. Now I suppose you could use a Craig jig from the back, however, Craig jig screws are more expensive and I've got a whole bunch of these biscuits and I wanna try out my new biscuit joiner, um, but also these won't rust either and they'll be hidden, so it's, it's just good practice to, to to use that biscuit joiner and see how it works. Now, I don't want to put marks on the top because there's a, or there's a 45 here or a chamfer here. So what I'll have to do is flip everything over upside down. I can mark the back. I'm going to label it so to make sure that this always matches with the appropriate uh, diagonal to batten because I'm going to have multiples of these, right? So I'll put my marks on the back and I'll label them which, which pair matches with what pair and uh, I'll be able to mass produce that, so here we go. Another thing to take note here is, when you're cutting the biscuit, the actual cut protrudes about 3 16 to an eighth outside of the biscuit. So if you had your biscuits closer to the outside edge of the diagonal or the batten, then you're gonna see this cut. Now this is my sample cut here. So I'm gonna keep the biscuits as close to the center as possible. I can make a mark center where they're gonna go and then what I'll do is I'll adjust my tri-square to first one will be set to the first mark and my next tri-square will go to the next mark that way I can quickly get these marked and make sure that the uh, biscuit will be in the, in the center uh, location Biscuits are almost exactly one eighth. And I'm just using these pipe clamps here as a temporary clamp to keep everything tight as all my fasteners are coming in on the bottom side so you don't see any fasteners on the top end. So I'm going to get that a little tight. <laughs>
pretty simple when you think about it, yet elegant and modern, I would say. Now I'm just going to complete the same process for the remaining five. And uh, we'll put some finish on these and hang them up.